Hmm. I never thought twice about it, but my mom always told me, she's like, you need to get in the movies. And then I finally got into it. And, you know, she sees the struggle that I've gone through so far since I started this. And she's like, you know, maybe you should have stuck with that job and this and that. And I was like, mom, it, it takes time. She thinks I'm, I'm going to be an overnight success and it doesn't work that way. <laughs> well, what have you learned since then? Well, what happened in between then? And then what did you learn since then? Uh, what I've learned so far since I restarted this, um, I've I pretty much developed my own system. You know, when I started doing the background, I've developed my own system to where I always seem to get seen by the director or, you know, the producer. And they're like, Ron, come with me. And now, you know, all the crew down there pretty much circles back around on every production. So everybody knows me and, you know, they know I do a good job. I'm passionate about everything. And, you know, I don't cause trouble. William had that same vibe. And he yep. even said, don't be a pain in the ass and be easy nope. to work with and be friendly. And everybody else is going to just get pushed to the side because you're such a sweetheart, you know, and stuff like that's, that. You know, That's you, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. That's exactly what happens. I mean, they, they know I can deliver and, you know, they know who they know people down there that can deliver, you know, like my good friend, Rob, you know, he, he's been pulled out for so many speaking roles. He's worked the black phone. He, you know, uh, is a great guy. He's a really good friend of mine. Um, he really roots for me and tries to help me and he's very supportive. I love that guy. <laughs> I think you should interview him too. <laughs> yeah, oh, we would, would love you, uh, to put a good word in for us. We'd love to do just that because we love the stories. I mean, and, and this list of stuff you've done here, uh, let me tell you something. There's a lot of things on this list. Um, I keep seeing this. Uh, what is that black phone? I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it. What was that? Oh, that's a, Ethan Hawke uh, yeah. movie. Uh, oh, I just Ethan I had a Hawk. small part in that. Um, I was a paramedic EMT in that a lot of the stuff that I did got cut out, but, um, at the end of the movie, you'll see Mason Thames, um, and the little girl, um, they, they clipped my head off, but you can see me through the window and all that, but cool. you know, cool. when things go in the, the editing, the cutting room floor, you know, a lot of stuff gets cut out. So I, like I didn't see him. Did you work with him? Uh, he was on the movie. Uh, I did meet, get to work with uh, Jeremy Davies. Mm, cool. um, super nice guy. He kind of felt sorry for me that night. It was pouring down rain. It was cold. And he took the jacket off of his back and he was like, here, take my jacket. I was like, no, I can't take that. He was like, take it. Wow. You know, he told production, he's like, this guy needs to get inside. And it was just a slop mess when we filmed that night. That's so cool. You know what this show is doing? Yeah. It's showing who's a sweetheart and who's not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you nice people are <laughs> yeah, coming in. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. Uh, gosh. So um, <clears throat> what do you think you're going to be working on next anyway? Um, I hope I'm working on this one I auditioned for. <laughs> it's oh, a you big will talk one. about it at all? Or do you got to keep I it quiet? Yeah. I can't say anything about it. And You know, I mean, I don't know how my chances are for it, but it, it's a big role. Well, you certainly got the whole nice guy going uh, thing yeah. going. So, uh, you know, much, much luck to you. Well, one thing that I wanted to touch upon, it seems like North Carolina and may maybe the same thing. You, well, you probably don't know about Atlanta, but it seems like oh, it's I do. less cut. Is, is it less cut throat than L.A. or like a place uh, like L.A. or Chicago or New York where they're, you know, maybe your people you're working on on set, you're competing with each other. So it's big competition. What do you think? I I honestly, I don't know because I've never been in the okay. L.A. market, but. Uh, I've been in the L.A. market and I'm not certain that it's like that, but you would think, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be, it'd I mean, be a it, lot more cutthroat in L.A. than. It's definitely cutthroat in Wilmington. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I when I first started, I tried to help out a lot of people and I got burned a few times. I mean, I don't mind helping anybody that has a passion for acting, but there's a lot of people that just seem to think that uh, they can be just handed something when they initially just start doing like background and it doesn't work that way. You've got to work in the trenches. I mean, what you've got to put your work in. Let's say I wanted to get into that. What, what do you think the, the ground level uh, entry is? What, what, what would I be doing? You would do background work. Yeah. And then, you know, if you do a good job, they might 
you know, you might have a director pictures pick where they feature you. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, my friend Rob, you know, he's been upgraded multiple times in the speaking roles. So wow. it, yeah. I see it happen all the time. That is awesome. You know what yeah. I'm getting out of all these interviews and out of you is that anyone can really do it if you're if you have a good attitude and you're dedicated. Yeah, yeah. You might have to be in a good place. That's why we're kind of grilling you for information here because right. you know I would like to get into this.